A diverse family of silver-based complexes shows great promise as new anti-cancer drugs. Dr. Zelinda Engelbrecht from Biochemistry at the University of Johannesburg will show us how these silver complexes target cancer cells. Here we'll look at how one of these complexes, called UJ3, targets human cancer cells, specifically their powerhouses, the mitochondria inside the cells. The silver phosphine complexes synthesized at the University of Johannesburg, including EJ3, are highly selective, targeting human cancer cells with minimal or no effect on healthy non-cancerous cells. Animal studies revealed that rats tolerated an oral intake of 3 gram of EJ3 per 1 kilogram of body mass, with minimal effect on vital organs, indicating the complex is non-toxic. UJ3 is 10 times more effective on human esophageal cancer cells, which become resistant to current forms of chemotherapy, than a widely used chemotherapeutic drug, cisplatin. In general, these silver complexes are easy and cheap to manufacture, using standard lab equipment, yielding a product of high purity. Next, we will see how UJ3 activates existing mechanisms inside cancer cells to kill them, with a neat and tidy process called apoptosis, which does not cause inflammation. Here we see the structural changes that happen when human esophageal cancer cells are treated with the UJ3 compound or with the established chemotherapeutic drug called cisplatin. On the left, we see the live cancer cells in the vehicle control, which is a non-toxic solvent used to dissolve the drug in. In the middle, we see cancer cells dying after treatment with 10 micromole UJ3. By measuring the metabolic activity of the cells, we see that 70% of the cancer cells are dead. On the right, we see similar structure changes in the cells treated with cisplatin. Here, more cells are visible, but by measuring metabolic activity, we see that 65% of the cancer cells are dead. This indicates that a 10 times higher concentration of cisplatin is required to induce a similar toxicity profile as UJ3. This will also be seen in the fluorescent images in the sections that follow. To see what happens when UJ3 kills a cancer cell, we need to look a bit closer at the structures inside human cells, both healthy and cancerous ones. The purple circle is the plasma membrane which contains a lot of organelles and structures. The important ones for us here are the blue nucleus and the red mitochondria. The mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. Without them, the cell's batteries are flat and all processes come to a halt. The blue nucleus is the command center of the cell. While this is still active, any remaining structures inside the cell may attempt to carry on. Here we see a cancer cell on the left and a healthy one on the right. Cancer cells create tumors because they grow bigger and make copies of themselves a lot faster than healthy cells do. To make this possible, they need far more energy than healthy cells. This is where the mitochondria enter the chemotherapy picture. Mitochondria in cancer cells produce far more energy than their equivalents in a healthy cell. This means that a cancer cell needs a lot of energy as fuel for its mitochondria. To get that fuel, the cancer cells absorb far more glucose, shown here with the arrows, than a healthy cell. The mitochondria then converts glucose into ATP which enables the cancer cell to grow bigger and to quickly make copies of itself. Recall the huge need for lots of energy in a cancer cell, the bioenergetics of the mitochondria. Existing chemotherapeutic drugs exploit this need and target the mitochondria to trigger the cancer cell into shutting itself down in the apoptosis cell death process. Apoptosis is a neat and tidy way for the cells to die, which does not cause inflammation in surrounding healthy cells and makes for far fewer side effects in chemotherapy. The family of silver phosphine complexes we tested, including EJ3, also trigger apoptosis and with the same efficacy, at a much lower dose, only targeting cancerous cells. Now we look at how UJ3 triggers apoptotic cell death. UJ3 goes through the plasma membrane, shown in purple, and enters the cell. Then it goes through the membrane of the mitochondrium, shown in red. Once UJ3 is inside the mitochondrium, it slams the brakes on energy production, so less ATP to fuel tumor growth is produced. On the left, at vehicle control, we see intact active mitochondria in cancer cells, stained in red. There are lots of them, which means there's a high energy output. 
The UJ3 image shows how few mitochondria are still lighting up and producing energy after treatment with 10 micromole. The last image shows how few mitochondria are still active after treatment with 100 micromoles of splatin. The complex we tested, UJ3, appears to have another effect on the cell, causing the mitochondria to release a protein called cytochrome C, which is shown by the green dots in the graphic on the right. On the left, in the vehicle control image, we see cytochrome C lighting up green inside the mitochondria of live cancer cells. The UJ3 image shows how few active mitochondria with cytochrome C inside them are left after treatment with 10 micromole of UJ3. The cisplatin image shows the same, but after treatment with 100 micromole. Once cytochrome C is outside the mitochondrium, it gangs up with other proteins in a complex biochemical process, which creates a wheel of death, shown as the purple daisy in the graphic. The wheel of death wakes up the sleeping executioner molecule of caspase 3. Caspase 3 goes to work by cutting up and activating other proteins that target the cell's command center, the DNA inside the blue nucleus and the nucleolus as well. On the left, in vehicle control, we see cancer cells with their blue nucleoli, active and functional, that look like fuzzy little blue lights. However, once the cell's DNA and nucleolus are being cut up and become condensed, they look like bright little blue lights before they finally go out. So, the UJ3 image shows bright little blue dots. This shows how few cancer cells have nucleoli in their lowest cusps after treatment with 10 micromole of the complex. The cisplatin image shows the same after treatment with 100 micromole of the complex. After this, the last phase of apoptotic cell death begins. The pillars and cross beams of the cell start collapsing in on itself. This collapsing is called blebbing. In the image, we see this happening with the purple bulges forming on the main cell. The dying cell is divided into lots of smaller sealed packets called apoptotic bodies, which contain bits and pieces of the original cell structures. The traveling scavenger cells, the phagocytes, shown here in yellow, can then chomp up and recycle the packets. When a cell dies with the apoptosis process, its contents don't contaminate and poison the healthy cells around it, so no inflammation and no immune response occurs, and the chemotherapy creates fewer side effects. UJ3 is a very promising potential new anti-cancer drug which targets the mitochondria, resulting in apoptosis. In addition, UJ3 is a member of a large family of silver phosphine compounds and some of the others show promise as well. This research is part of a 10-year project by Prof. Reinhard Mayboom from Chemistry on the left and Prof. Marianne Cronier from Biochemistry in the middle at the University of Johannesburg. Dr. Zelinda Engelbrecht from Biochemistry on the right is the lead researcher for these results in the Biometals Journal. To see the research article, follow the DOI link at the bottom of the screen.